Yasin Malik, like uh, the killing of the Air Force personnel and Rubia Seed kidnapping case. Uh, those cases will be expedited and Yasin Malik will be brought to justice. We feel that in those cases he will get death sentence. <laughs> I'm 100% sure that justice will be given to me. People say justice uh, delayed, justice denied. But I don't agree on this because I had been denied my legitimate right of getting my pension, my husband's pension, when Naga Mizo militants were rehabilitated in this country. But defense forces were denied their legitimate right. I fought my case and with the, the grace of Almighty God, I got uh, that case. Now that is a precedent of India, an officer going to his office and route to his office or while coming from office. If any untoward incident occurs on the way, the deceased family will be given last pay drawn till death, even after remarriage on reduced pay scale. So, I believe I am given this uh, justice. So, I am drawing my husband's pension on liberalized pensionary award. Or after that, my husband uh, is given that uh, honor of uh, this uh, National War Memorial uh, in present uh, government's uh, regime. So, are you satisfied so, with the verdict in this case? Are you satisfied? Uh, what can, uh, for my case, I am again, time and again, I am requesting, I am requesting, time and again, I am requesting, time and again, I am requesting, requesting that in my case, what I want with loud voice, I can say, I can claim that there should be the same. Two life imprisonments have been given and besides that 10 years rigorous imprisonment in 10 offences besides monetary penalty and all the punishments will run concurrently. Okay. So that's the latest. Death sentence was sought but a life imprisonment has been given. Death has been declined. Death has been declined. Can you tell us in detail as to what will it No, I have not read the order. Huh? You will get the entire detailed order that uh, court will justify what court has what uh, considered, what are the circumstances, whatever has been considered, that will get what the detailed order. What is the final order. quantum of punishment? Besides Two life that? imprisonments and five, ten sir, years, sir, sir, all to run concurrently. One life means everything, entire life. Yani dono, uh, jo umr ke, do mamlum, jo umr ki sajau, ye saath saath chalegi, ye court ne saath kiya hai. Ajay, kitna jurmana kiya gaya hai? Das lakh hai, aur das hajar, paanch hajar, sab mein alag alag hai. Kul mila kar ke kitna jurmana hai? Ye joda nahi mene, wo joda nahi mene. Ajay, just saamne kya faisle mein ki jo, ye niskars nikala hai, ki umr kaid ki sajai, uska adhar bhi bata hai, kuch operative part jo pada hai? Nahi, nahi, unhoon ne plead ये सिर्फ सेंटेंसिंग है तो जो उम्र कैद की सजा हुई वो 121 के तहत हुई और दूसरा कौन सा सेक्शन 121 और दूसरा शायद 17 है अभी ऑर्डर में आएगा अच्छा जो यूएपी का जो एक सेक्शन है ओके ठीक ठीक सर एक बार अपना पूरा नाम बता दीजिए उमेश शर्मा एडवोकेट हूं मैं क्या कोर्ट में हुआ प्लीज थोड़ा सा अभी सेंटेंसिंग पे ऑर्डर हुआ है अभी जज साहब ने प्रोनाउंस किया है दो लाइफ सेंटेंसिंग है और 10 10 इयर्स की पांच पनिशमेंट है इनके जुर्माने को लेकर जुर्माना 10 लाख रुपए है 10000 है और व्हाट he was told about all the consequences which he was supposed to do, to face once he plead guilty and all the things we were told to him and today now the matter has been decided and he is sentenced for 120b he has been punished with 10 years and 10,000 fine for 121 IPC he is punished with life imprisonment and 10,000 fine 121A IPC 10, 10 years with 10,000 fine 13 UAPA, red with 120B IPC, 5 year fine, 5, 5 year, 5,000 fine, 15 UAPA, punishment under 16 UAPA, 10 years, 10,000 fine, 17 UAPA, life, 10 lakh fine, 18 UAPA, 10, 10 years, 10,000 fine, 38 UAPA, 5,000, 5 years, 5,000 fine, 39 UAPA, 5 year, 5,000 fine, Section 20 UAPA, 10 year, 10,000 fine. Anything else you people want to ask? Any questions, questions? Any questions from your side? Any questions? Sir, this is I will come outside.
बिग केस टेररिस्ट यासीन मलिक हैज बीन सेंटेंस टू अ लाइफ इन प्रिजन एंड इन टू डिफरेंट केसेस व्हिच मींस टू कंकरेंट लाइफ सेंटेंसेस ही विल स्पेंड द रेस्ट ऑफ हिज रिमेनिंग इयर्स इन जेल इज व्हाट द लर्नड जज जज सेड इन अदर केसेस ही हैज बीन फाइंड अप टू 10 लाख रुपीस ही हैज बीन फाइंड 10 लाख रुपीस इन सम केसेस 10000 रुपीस फाइन इन अदर केसेस एंड 10 इयर्स rigorous imprisonment in five other cases including criminal conspiracy for terror funding and terror strikes it's a huge judgment this of course is the first case the uh, first trial of yasin malik in an nia court he does have an opportunity to appeal in a superior court let's listen into reactions coming in ye then basically uh, a chance was given to यासिन मलिक कोर्ट हैज परमिटेड इम टू बेसिकली से एंड यासिन मलिक हैज ऑलरेडी आई मीन प्लीडेड बिफोर द कोर्ट डेट ही हैज नॉट बेसिकली ही सेड डेट मैं ज़्यादा कुछ नहीं बोलने वाला हूँ आप जो भी सेंटेंस देना चाहते हैं आप दे सकते हैं एंड बस ये सेड कि आई हैव बीन अ नॉन वायलेंस लीडर पॉलिटिकल लीडर इन द कंट्री एंड आई हैव नेवर बेसिकली रेज दिस थिंग की टू डिवाइड द कंट्री फॉर एनी एनी रीजन एंड आई हैव बीन वर्क विद सेवन प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया एंड लास्टली बेसिकली वन अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी वॉज देयर सो आई हैव बीन इवन गिवन दी पासपोर्ट तो उन्होंने ये कहा था फिर उसके बाद कोर्ट ने ऑर्डर रिजर्व किया था उन्होंने ये भी बोला था कि कोर्ट जो है ये सब चीज़ों का ध्यान रखेगी वाइल गिविंग दी अब दी बात है बेसिकली मेडिकेटिंग फैक्टर्स विच कोर्ट हैज़ टू टेक केयर देन अभी साढ़े तीन बजे के लिए कोर्ट कोर्ट ने ऑर्डर प्रोनाउंस के रखा था बट सिंस ऑर्डर वॉज लॉन्ग सो अभी 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 अब अभी जाके छः बजे छः बजे सो मैक्स बेसिकली ऑन ईच सेक्शन टेन थाउजेंड हुआ है एंड मैक्सिम पनिशमेंट लाइन प्रोसीडिंग बिकॉज ही हेज प्लीडेड गिलती तो देर विल नॉट much thing i mean that will see that will see i mean and that so basically court uh, doesn't i mean uh, this right now the proceedings have happened and court has pronounced the imprisonment right now the maximum punishment was given is life imprisonment by the court there was a uh, 8 to 10 sections basically in which uh, two in under two sections life imprisonment was given so that's all basically uh, what else you want to know do tell us what is the quantum uh, of punishment in terms of fine in terms of uh, concurrent so basically in under under section 120b it was a 10 years illness imprisonment along with 10000 fine under section 121 it was given uh, life imprisonment along with 10000 regress uh, i mean 10000 fine and 121 it was again 10 10 years of regress imprisonment but section 17 of uapa he has been given life imprisonment under section 17 17 basically under two section he has been given life imprisonment when is section 17 17 and 121 IPC, IPC. 121 also, IPC and 17 of UAPA uh, also uh, uh, the NI had sought uh, death penalty for him uh, the court has not uh, court was so not what inclined. what is the next proceeding can he appeal in the high court uh, yes, uh, so we cannot much say right now because he has pleaded guilty so he cannot uh, go on appeal but uh, things uh, i mean i mean wait for the other things we will see what other other actions has what about the other appeal so i mean it has been pronounced again only uh, yasin malik right now uh, thank you so much for speaking to us uh, so a big day as far as the terror financing is concerned conviction for yasin malik and quantum of sentence as two life imprisonment and yes 10000 rupees fine each so very clearly uh, under the stringent sections uh, 17 of the uapa and section 121 Uh, of the ipc this is where yasin malik been given life imprisonment uh, there's a heavy fine which has been imposed to him there uh, there is going to be obviously uh, perhaps a closure for many uh, but as far as the other cases are concerned uh, they are current concurrently going on in several other courts uh, but clearly uh, the first conviction really coming in here just to start nevertheless it has come let's go across now to shreya chatterjee shreya let's get this straight now of course there are different uh, uh, there are 10 years 10000 10 lakh rupees fine seven upa charges under which the quantum has been announced but the waging war against the government against the country terror funding 17 uapa 121 upc this is against which he's got life imprisonment Well, absolutely, absolutely. So, Pooja, now there are ten uh, sections under which he's been convicted in uh, this 2017 terror funding case. But two of the sections against which he's been uh, guaranteed uh, life imprisonment. One is section 121 of the IPC, which is waging war. For that, he's been given life imprisonment and a fine of 10,000. And under 17 UAPA, it's life imprisonment and a fine of 10 lakh. Now. 
all these sections under which he's been uh, uh, given punishments will be running concurrently. Uh, the uh, the judgment was pronounced by the special NIA judge Praveen Singh. Ten of the total sections under which he's been pronounced guilty, but two of those main puja are uh, section 121 and 17 UAPA. What? He was in court. How did how did Yasin Malik react to the sentencing? What was the atmosphere like in the courtroom, Shreya? Well, uh, inside the courtroom, we saw Yasin Malik. He held his calm. He was calm since uh, morning. Remember, he's the one who fought his case uh, by himself. He refused for a lawyer. Is why an amicus curia was also given so that uh, the uh, uh, the charges are explained uh, to him. The same happened when the judge was pronouncing the order. Uh, the amicus curia was explaining the charges to uh, Yasin Malik. He held calm and he heard all the charges uh, before the judge was arriving. Uh, he was also given a chair to sit because it was quite Shreya, a long stay time. Stay on to... with me. Stay on with me because right now reactions coming in from all sides. Let's listen in to what lawyers are saying. Yeah, then I. Graver hai. Matlab uske la do hi option thi, life or death. तो लाइफ मिल गया तो इट्स सर ठीक है बाकी डिसाइड करेंगे अभी फाइल पे पुट अप होगा हायर अथॉरिटीज का क्या भी हुआ है वो लोग बताएंगे लेकिन इसमें जो इसमें जो धाराएं लगाई गई वो काफ़ी स्ट्रांग धाराएं हैं जिस पर कोर्ट ने बहुत अच्छे से संज्ञान लिया है और आपकी अधिकतर चीज़ें आपने सिद्ध भी की और सिद्ध होने के साथ साथ आरोप सिद्ध होने के साथ साथ मुजरिम ने तस्लीम भी किया ये स्वीकार किया कि हाँ उसने ये अपराध किए देखिए पहले तो इन्वेस्टिगेशन बढ़िया हुई है केस में तभी अक्यूज को पता था कि कॉन्टेस्ट करके भी कोई फ़ायदा नहीं है तो उसने ऐसे बिना सोचे समझे तो किया नहीं तो ग्रेवर ऑफेंस था बड़े लेवल पे कॉन्स्पिरेसी थी इंडिया से थी फॉरेन कंट्री से थी तो बड़े लेवल का हाई प्रोफाइल होता जो लोग इस मामले में पीड़ित रहे हैं जिन वायु सैनिकों की हत्या की यासिन मलिक ने अपनी गोली से और निहत्थे लोगों की ऐसे मासूम लोगों की उनके परिवार वालों का कहना है कि बाकी तो अदालत जो भी सजा दे लेकिन हम चाहते हैं खून का बदला देखिए मेरा ये आर्गूमेंट आज ये रहा है कि देखिए रेट्रीब्यूटिव जो थ्योरी है ना पुनिशमेंट इट टॉक्स अबाउट आई फॉर आई एंड टूथ फॉर टूथ एंड आई हैव मेड सबमिशन टू द कोर्ट दैट इन द केस ऑफ यासिंग मलिक ना इवन रिफॉर्मेटरी थ्योरी कांट बी थिंक ऑफ बिकॉज ही इज अ हार्ड कोर फंडामेंटलिस्ट वो तो ठीक है क्या यासिन मलिक ने जब ये कहा कि वो गांधी जी के रास्ते पर चल रहा है हिंसा छोड़ने के बाद तो अदालत क्या उससे भी कुछ करने उनका आर्गूमेंट था उनके वकील ने भी कहा और वो लेकिन वो ऑन रिकॉर्ड नहीं है ना चीज़ें बोलने में कुछ मेरी गांधी पर प्रोटेस्ट कैलेंडर मिला है ई मिली हैं वो सब कुछ एविडेंस स्ट्रॉन्ग एविडेंस था हमारे पास इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एविडेंस भी मिले बहुत मिला है सब कुछ था व्हाट्सएप चैट्स थी ई थी वो सब एविडेंस था तो तो सिर्फ ये कह देने से कितना वो रहता है कि साहब हम तो गांधी जी के रास्ते पर चल रहे हैं और हथियार छोड़ने के बाद हमने तो सात प्रधानमंत्रियों के साथ काम किया और गांधी जी के रास्ते पर है कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता देखिए आपका बिहेवियर और आपकी एक्टिविटीज मुंह में कुछ और है अंदर कुछ और है वो नहीं चलेगा तो ये कहते हैं कि नौ सौ चूहे खा के बिल्ली हज को चली तो बिल्ली तो हाजी हो सकती है लेकिन कानून की निगाह में कोई निर्दोष नहीं हो सकता कोर्ट हैज डिसाइडेड आफ्टर टेकिंग इन टू कॉन्सिड्रेशन ऑल द ओरल एंड डॉक्यूमेंट्री एविडेंस विच वी हैव सबमिटेड इन द चार्जशीट कितना चुनौतीपूर्ण रहा आप आप लोगों के लिए एन आई ए का इसके इसे यहाँ तक अंजाम तक पहुँचाना कितने लोगों की टीम लगी थी और कितने आप लोगों ने दिन रात काम किए था देखिए पहले मैं ना थोड़ा हमारा ऑफिशियल स्टेटमेंट जो है इसको नाम माना जाए बींग अ प्रोसिक्यूटर मैं ठीक है वो शाम को एक प्रेस रिलीज आ जाएगा लेकिन ठीक है मैं थोड़ा बहुत इसके मतलब इस केस में जुड़ा हुआ हूँ शुरू से अंजना ओम कश्यप सीधा आपसे सवाल पूछ रही हैं हाँ। कि फांसी की सजा की मांग को लेकर आप जिसके आप प्रोसिक्यूटर हैं एनआईए के तो क्या आप लोग हायर कोर्ट में जाएंगे चुनौती देने के वी विल थिंक ओवर इट इट विल बी द इशू विल बी टेकन अप बिफोर द हायर अथॉरिटीज एंड इसको हर एंगल से देखा जाएगा तो जो भी डिसाइड होता है आ, सामने आ जाएगा कुछ दिनों में इनका कहना है कि सीधा जो भी चीजें हार उठाते तय करेंगी वो सामने और राइट गौरव सो दैट वॉज द एन आई लॉयर द प्रोसिक्यूटर एंड वेरी क्लियरली स्टेटिंग दैट देड इनफ एविडेंस लिसन इन टू मोर रिया सजा की जरूरत थी 
और खास करके बहुत से ऐसे केस पेंडिंग्स हैं ये तो टेरर फंडिंग का मामला है लेकिन जो अपहरण हत्या इस प्रकार के जो कई इन पर केस पहने उसमें मुझे उम्मीद है कि आने वाले समय में इससे भी सख्त सजा इनको सजा सुनाई जाएगी तो लगता है कि ये सही जस्टिस हुआ देखिए न्यायालय पर सवाल खड़ा करना उन्होंने सबूतों और दूसरे चीज आधारों आधार पर ये काम किया है उसका हिसाब से ही फैसला सुनाया है तो मुझे लगता है मान्य हो, हमें होना चाहिए इसके साथ ही मैंने पहले कहा कि जो इन पर और केसेस हैं हत्याओं के या माहौल वहाँ पर ख़राब करने के पाकिस्तान के इशारों पर काम करने की ये सब चीज़ें पहले से तय हैं और इसको मद्देनज़र रखते हुए उन परिवारों को कम से कम न्याय मिलेगा जिन जिनको कि आज तक तीस सालों में किसी ने पूछा नहीं किसी का परिवार का कोई व्यक्ति चला गया किसी का अपहरण किया किसी को मारा गया ये सब ये जो अपराध हैं जब साबित होंगे तो निश्चय ही इससे भी सख्त सजा होनी ही चाहिए जो तो टेर अभी टेरर फंडिंग का और हवाले का मामला है डिप्टी चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर बीजेपी नेता कविंदर गुप्ता बट लुक एट दिस मैन ऑन योर स्क्रीन राइट नाउ ही वॉज वॉकिंग आर ऑफ प्रिजन दिस इज अ शॉर्ट वाइल अगो यासिन मलिक स्टिल मैनेजिंग टू हैव अ स्माइल ऑन हिस्स फेस बिकॉज ही फेल्ट ही हैज गॉट अ वे फॉर सो लॉन्ग बट नॉट एनी मोर द लॉ हैज कॉट अप and the clock is ticking for yasin malik the terrorist who's right now convicted of terror funding gorav finally the day has come nevertheless a start today for waging war against the country for brainwashing young men and women yasin malik convicted today a very dangerous mind a very dangerous terrorist yasin malik involved in active cases of terror in jammu and kashmir he's finally been sentenced to a life in prison and two cases they will run concurrently so he will spend the rest of his living years in tihar central jail that's as of now he's also been fined up to 10 lakh rupees in multiple cases and 10 10000 rupees in other cases and 5 years in prison and 10 years but let's listen into more reactions that are coming in ठीक है मेरा नंबर ले लीजिएगा आई विल प्रोवाइड माई प्रोवाइड द कॉपी कोर्ट हैज ओनली प्रोनाउंस द ऑर्डर ऑन सेंटेंस इन विच ही हैज गिवन सेंटेंसेस इन वेरियस सेक्शन कई धाराओं में सजा सुनाई है उसमें वन ट्वेंटी वन आई पी सी और सत्रह यू ए पी ए के अंदर उन्होंने उम्र कैद की सजा सुनाई बट मैक्सिमम सेंटेंस मैक्सिमम सेंटेंस बट लेकिन कोर्ट हैज ऑल्सो लुक इन टू दी पास्ट एंटीसीडेंट एंड ऑल्सो दी प्रॉप probability of the reformation of any of the accused whenever any sentence is decided total jurmana kitna hoga lagbhag total jurmana mere hisab se jo dekh ke samajh mein aa raha hai 11 ke aas pass aayega 11 lakh ke aas pass 11 lakh ke aas pass keh rahe ho total kya kuch aaj kya kuch ek minute ek minute sir aaj kya kuch ek minute ek minute kya yaar bhai aap hi kar lo mere yaar ye ye pehle sir ye pehle jo jo kya hua mai kar raha hu sir aap dd ka mai kar raha hai prem thoda sa vistar mein bata dijiye अरे आप नाराज ना कर लो निकल लो एक साथ नहीं करना है ना ले 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 फिर आप फोटो ले लो नाराज सर आज डबल डबल सर आप नंबर दे दो सर आप अभी से केस की हुई थी सर आज क्या पूरा मामला हो सर हां जी लाइव है क्या हुआ सर ये उस समय बिगड़ हुआ सर बताइए क्या हुआ सर आज कोर्ट में मैटर फिक्स था ऑन द पॉइंट ऑफ इंग्लिश में बोल सकते हैं यस 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 ऑन द पॉइंट ऑफ quantum of sentence to be awarded in the judgment which was pronounced on 19th of may 2022 in state versus Sa hafiz said in which yasin malik was one of the accused accused number 14 okay both the party the state which is nia in the present case and i as a amicus curiae appointed by the honorable court both people argued regarding the quantum of the sentence under section 1921 ipc the maximum sentence was death or the capital punishment and under uh, and the minimum punishment was life imprisonment both the parties nia asked for a capital punishment 
एंड आई बींग माइकस क्यों रही आई आस रिक्वेस्टेड बिफोर द ऑनरेबल कोर्ट टू अवॉर्ड अ लाइफ इम्प्रिजमेंट विच वॉज द मिनिमम सेंटेंस इन द सेंटेंसेज इन विच ही हैज़ बीन कन्विक्टेड सर वट वॉज द मैटर ऑफ प्लीज वट वॉज द मैटर ऑफ प्लीज वॉट मलिक सैन वट वॉज द मैटर ऑफ प्लीज आई एम आस्किंग वॉट मलिक सैन वैन जज आज यू हैव जज सैन मलिक हैज स्टेटेड बिफोर द ऑनरेबल कोर्ट दैट ही इज totally satisfied by the honorable court decision and he is fully satisfied with all the legal assistance he has been provided to him during the course of the on the point of the plead guilty and uh, the, and the sentence and also the judgment what will be the further process now the people can go to high court also sir once the person plead guilty at, then there is a very very less chances that he can challenge the sentence order because he himself stated that he has been that he has committed those crime so only the sentence or the ch- only the challenge will be regarding the quantum of the sentence that not more than that in din bata dijiye kitna jurmana lagaya sir total jurmana 11 lakh ke aas paas laga hua thank you sir kya kuch aaj court mein hua sir ya sikh kya gorav as we watch these proceedings of the court as i watch this man walking out of the court knowing he's convicted knowing he has been exposed it is a big day because this reminds us that our courts are ensuring that terrorists like him will not get away easily and here was a man who actually confessed to all his yes. charges he pleaded guilty and as the learned amica scure or the friend of the court was mentioning uh, you know to to journalists that once he's pleaded guilty once he's been sentenced he cannot go in appeal against the sentence to a superior court very little chance of that but the nia will take a call whether the nia wants to appeal against a life in prison and seek the death penalty because the nia sought capital punishment in both cases of terror funding where he is one of the accused and hafiz mohammed said the pakistani terrorist is the main accused um, in the terror financing case remember these are cases that are pertaining to 2016 17 where pakistani money was used to fuel terror in jammu and kashmir and yasin malik stands accused or now convicted of organizing those protests after terrorist burhan wani was killed while claiming to be a peaceful gandhian it is also important to understand how the national investigative agencies ensured that they gather strong evidence to be put in court whether it was the conversations whether it was digital evidence whether it was accounts they managed got out they ensured this is an opportunity they had to be sure they had solid evidence and that is the reason that minimum at least life imprisonment is a quantum that has been given ni co ni prosecutors are likely to of course possibly take this further you know you have the courts that are watching this very carefully you have yes. hostile elements uh, from across the border uh, who are already crying uh, horse crying themselves horse uh, given the sentencing because they realize that one of the main conduits of pakistan state sponsored terror in jammu and kashmir has been sentenced to a life in prison in one case he's facing trials where charges have been framed in multiple cases including the murder of four indian air force personnel and the abduction of the daughter of then union home minister of india uh, and and uh, you know rubaiya said yes. uh, sister of former jammu and kashmir chief minister mehbooba mufti so those cases the trial is continuing and, and charges have been framed and action is likely to be taken soon in them and i want to quickly bring in shreya chatterji for more uh, you know puja in, in this conversation yes. shreya give us details of the kind of evidence nia had gathered against yasin malik in terms of terror funding from pakistan well uh, gaurav you know uh, when nia was investigating the case uh, which it is registered in 2017 they had uh, got digital evidences they had also got transactions because remember there were shell companies that were floated hawala routes that were created and then money was pumped in from uae from pakistan by isi agencies into the valley to create an atmosphere of terror now we also do know that during the raids uh, from yasin malik som uh, a note was also recovered where there was clear instructions given that the uh, the youth should be disengaged and then used for uh, stone pelting remember it's the same period of time uh, when 89 cases of stone pelting was 
registered in the valley so there is incriminating oh, no, evidence oh, no, oh, against yasin malik there is an establishment of the fact that money was indeed received by uh, yasin malik because zahur wajali one of the kashmir businessmen who was a hawala conduit who was helping in getting the money there was a transaction detail that the nia had recovered of 15 lakhs that uh, was transferred uh, from zahur wajali to yasin malik so definitely there was incriminating evidence is why um, the charges were framed and then uh, we also saw uh, yasin malik plead guilty on the 10th of may and finally today the court has uh, pronounced the order and life imprisonment is the maximum that yasin malik has uh, got under the sections 121 and uh, 17 uapa and it is very important here as we look at these photographs coming in from kashmir from the protests against yasin malik taking place in delhi as well and of course him walking out of the court rea as we talk about the court proceedings it is important to mention here yasin malik pleaded guilty on all charges he clearly realized his time is up the clock is ticking for him he tried to put as defense as much as possible but courts ensuring he does not walk out a hero he walks out for the crimes that he has been known for and that convicted and now a life imprisonment has been announced as a quantum of sentence and do tell us at this point uh, uh, shreya what are we expecting here on with regard to the court are we expecting the nia prosecutors uh, to take it further for a possible uh, demand for a death penalty because we do know uh, whether it is uh, the wife of squadron leader ravi khanna nirmal khanna or we know about the kashmiri pandits all of them have been demanding a death penalty and no less for yasin malik Well, absolutely. So, uh, Pooja, you know, we'll have to wait and watch whether NIA actually mulls about uh, uh, appealing before higher courts uh, for a death penalty, because indeed today. and i had sought for a death penalty in the matter under the section 121 ipc which is waging war uh, however the court has awarded a life imprisonment so whether or not nia would like to take forward uh, is something that we will have uh, to wait and watch out for but that is very much possible because uh, even earlier today morning the nia had sought for death penalty they used the very word that they want deterrent punishment in the matter because they want to set an example what happens when uh, people uh, plan such a huge thing because remember, Remember, protest calendars were created. There was incriminating evidence how the youth was also engaged in creating an atmosphere of terror, in creating an atmosphere of unrest in the valley, uh, which was absolutely planned from across the border. So we'll have to wait and watch whether NIA mulls uh, for the plans. But so far, a life imprisonment is what is awaiting Yasin Malik. All right, uh, Gaurav. As uh, we listen to what Shreya is uh, also telling us, remember he tried to say, "I've become a Gandhian." I do not use weapons anymore the fact is his repercussions of his actions are still felt young men are still taking up arms because of people like Yasin Malik you know this was such a facade and yes. such a carefully created facade by forces rather hostile here is an armed terrorist trained in pakistan occupied kashmir carried out a series of terror attacks then claimed that he'd given up the gun and claimed he turned a gandhian another terrorist slash separatist facing trial for terror cases called himself Nelson Mandela of India so one guy is calling himself the Gandhi of India and what are they actually doing they are arranging funds from Pakistan and other countries to create the next crop yes. of terrorists they okay. are the ones who are funding terror in Jammu and Kashmir like after the killing of terrorist Burhan Wani in 2016 17 and a large number of people civilians and security force personnel were killed in violence fueled by actions of these elements they burned schools you know you've you've been to kashmir so many times yes. you've lived in kashmir they burn down schools so that school children are available as stone pelters so it's a very carefully crafted radical islamist terror mindset that these people cover up with this facade of being gandhians and remember right now the victims the survivors of those crimes must be watching with hope that there is still hope for them to ensure that he gets maximum punishment we are talking about doordarshan director lasa call we are talking about nirmal khanna we are talking about other armed forces and just recently the daughter of saifullah qadri who is currently battling for her life let's go across now to sunil ji bhat in jammu all our reporters in delhi also updating us sunil Nirmal Khanna the wife of squadron leader Ravi Khanna watched the husband got killed but so much dignity and resilience even today in her voice it's incredible what is she saying now Sunil if you can hear me and how is she going to ensure that her fight continues 
Well, Pooja, we have been speaking to Nirmal Khanna ji right uh, throughout the day and uh, even when the verdict was out, we were the first one to talk to her to get her reaction and uh, she has spoken exclusively to us and she has said uh, that she is satisfied uh, with the verdict. In this case, she uh, honours uh, the uh, verdict that has come out but at the same time she has said that she now hopes that the cases that are pending against Yasin Malik, whether it's the Air Force personal killing case or the other, uh, you know, serious cases. Now, there should be uh, that the trial should take place in an expedited manner and the uh, day-to-day hearing should take place and she is quite hopeful now that justice will be delivered in Air Force personal killing case. She is saying that the current dispensation has the political will. She is quite hopeful. She has appealed to the Prime Minister Narendra Modi to ensure that there is speedy trial in other cases against Yasin Malik so that he is punished soon because he has been, he has been given a long rope and and he has gone scot-free for last 32 years. Finally, justice has been delivered and he has been awarded life imprisonment in terror funding case. She uh, says that now there is a ray of hope for her. She will continue her fight and uh, she's pinning her hopes on the judiciary. Uh, she had to fight a long legal battle for last 32 years and she had to also go through, you know, uh, mental trauma because even for her pension, she had to run from pillar to post. Uh, she says that she feels betrayed by the system at a time when the uh, you know the uh, the nation should have been standing with her uh, she oh, was aghast and pained to see yasin malik being given vip treatment by the civil society of the country but uh, she now hopes that justice will be delivered and she, you can see uh, that uh, that this has been a very long uh, you know legal battle and uh, she has a smile on her face today she wants now that the prosecutor should pursue the cases against Yasin Malik with all seriousness now, whether it's the Air Force personal case or the Rubia Said kidnapping case. She and has been the you very rightly the point out, now. She's actually a witness, and you know, Pooja, yes. Mrs. Nirmal Khanna is actually a witness in her husband's yes. murder case. And when you hear her, it is shocking. After her husband was shot dead by these terrorists, four people, four Indian Air Force personnel were shot dead as they waited for the Air Force bus to take them to the Air Force station in Srinagar. The terrorists danced on the dead bodies. The terrorists danced around the dead bodies. And these are people who were for decades hailed as Gandhians in our society. These Those Air who Force were dancing. personnel, Gora, were unarmed and yes. 28 bullets were fired into the body of Ravi Khanna. And the wife, that young woman, had to watch all this and has been fighting. And just listen even today to the dignity and resilience of that woman, Gaurav. Oh, absolutely. I have Kamaljeet Kaur Sandhu also joining Pooja and I on this special broadcast. Kamal, as far as the NIA is concerned, and you cover internal security better than anyone in our country, but give us details, Kamal, of the kind of investigations that went into it to secure a conviction of two lives in prison and 10 years in prison in other cases, and a penalty of 10 lakh in some cases and 10,000 in others. What kind of evidence was gathered? How was it gathered that it stood scrutiny in a court of law? Well, this will require patience because remember in 2017 when India Today did that sting operation where they really unraveled about how money was being pumped in and how this was being fueled to uh, used to fuel unrest in Kashmir Valley. Uh, that is when uh, the government and the centre, MHA, had actually uh, started an investigation by the NIA after which uh, a first few arrests were made. Uh, in that, uh, it was also Zahur Vatali at one time very influential businessman. And uh, thereafter, after we saw it was Shabir Shah and Yasin Malik who were picked up, uh, investigated and finally uh, very meticulously and I put together the evidence and the evidence was very clear uh, whether it was through uh, technical evidence, mobile uh, phones, uh, that how uh, money was really pumped in to fuel unrest, uh, give the hartal calendars, the calls, strikes, uh, stone pelting, all, th all these were done in a certain modus operandi. Uh, this is where uh, post-2016, uh, the killing of Burhan Wani, the HM commander, uh, the entire system was used uh, to ensure that there was 
uh, unrest which was fueled in Kashmir Valley. So this is a more recent case. But remember, there are concurrent cases in Tadar, the Rubaiya Sayyid case, the killing of four personnel. So it should not be confused as a life imprisonment only. This is a terror funding case. This is a significant case in terms of a crackdown on the ecosystem about how even those who had actually a uh, claim to shun away violence were involved in violence uh, by using vicarious means by using uh, terror funding and this is where uh, the importance of this investigation is and clearly uh, one of the lawyers that we spoke to who was in the amicus, uh, amicus curiae team uh, said if yasin malik has pleaded guilty he cannot further go in for an appeal which means that the life imprisonment will stand uh, but remember he is one of the 24 accused uh, so one by one once the conviction takes place uh, we'll see how how it really proceeds but at this point of time uh, okay. yasin malik of making a very important statement not uh, he 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 ensured that there was no baggage on him whether it was regarding the killings about the terror act he said that he shunned violence and become a gandhian uh, but Kamal nobody Jeet, can, he can say that, that he shunned violence uh, and as much as he can say the fact is he's accused of not only sponsoring terror indulging in terror and the law eventually has caught up with yasin malik and it's just a start it's a precedence and of course this will reflect on many of those terrorists and separatists who are currently behind bars we are heading into a very short break but gaurav savant and i will ensure to get you minute by minute updates of the proceedings now as what the lawyers are planning to and what next for yasin malik the terrorist as he calls himself turned gambian that and more after the break Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com or call double nine double nine eight nine two one seven one. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com or call double nine double nine eight nine two one seven one. You are watching India Today.
pour les entrepôts de préparation de commandes. Donc typiquement, un de nos clients est Cdiscount. Si vous passez une commande chez Cdiscount, avant, c'est des gens qui, dans un entrepôt, essayaient de retrouver euh, le, le téléphone et la coque de téléphone que vous aviez commandé, qui pouvaient faire jusqu'à 15 km par jour dans des entrepôts immenses. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. You are watching India Today. Presented by Aditya Birla Group, big in your life. Co-powered by only OLX Autos gives the best price for your car. Co-powered by Panasonic Smart AC, AC for healthier homes. In association with SBI Life, अपने लिए, अपनों के लिए. You are watching India Today. Good evening, viewers. You are watching India Today. I'm Preeti Chaudhary. You're watching the only news bulletin where I curate the day's top special stories for our viewers. Let me take you through the headlines. NI court gives life imprisonment for Yasin Malik, found guilty under seven UAPA charges, including waging war against India and terror funding. Nine-year-old Safa inflames the entire nation. Terrorists killed her father, Constable Saifullah Kadri, and shot her. India prays for her recovery. Anger erupts over targeted killings of innocents. Another big setback to Gandhi's Kapil Sibyl Drums Congress files Rajya Sabha nomination on SP ticket. गा मुझे क्या वक्त आ गया है कि मुझे एक निर्दलीय के रूप में अगर मुझे सदन में जगह मिलती है तो मैं एक निर्दलीय के रूप में आवाज उठाऊं। Is it a Gyan Wapi rerun? In Karnataka's Mangaluru, after Hindu temple-like architectural design found allegedly beneath a mosque, VHP vows to perform puja near the disputed site. All right, viewers, it's taken decades, decades for justice to finally been delivered. After a fair amount of time uh, where the court kept stalling the verdict, Yasin Malik has been given the life term. It's taken decades of justice for finally to be delivered. Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front chief and terrorists involved in many attacks in the valley. Yasin Malik gets life imprisonment in a terror funding case. An NIA court in Delhi has found the JKLF leader guilty of seven charges under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. The court has also imposed 10 lakh rupees fine on Malik. Right ahead of the verdict, Malik supporters gathered outside his house in Sirinagar and started slogan airing. The cops had to fire tear gas to disperse the protesters and restore normalcy. Malik had pleaded guilty to charges related to terror funding, spreading terrorism and sexist activities in the Kashmir Valley in 2017. Malik is also accused of attacking Kashmiri pundits and killing four Indian Air Force personnel in the valley. क्या निराशा लगती है या लगता है कि चलो हाई कोर्ट है हाई कोर्ट में जाएंगे नहीं एक सब मिक्स्ड रिस्पांस एक्चुअली हमारा एफर्ट था लेकिन लाइफ इम्प्रेसमेंट भी ग्रेवर है मतलब उसके अलावा दो ही ऑप्शन थी लाइफ और डेथ तो लाइफ मिल गया तो एक सर ठीक है बाकी डिसाइड करेंगे अभी फाइल पे पुट अप होगा हायर अथॉरिटीज का क्या व्यू है 
वो लोग बताएंगे लेकिन इसमें जो इसमें जो धाराएं लगाई गई वो काफ़ी स्ट्रांग धाराएं हैं जिस पर कोर्ट ने बहुत अच्छे से संज्ञान लिया है और आपकी अधिकतर चीज़ें आपने सिद्ध भी की और सिद्ध होने के साथ साथ आरोप सिद्ध होने के साथ साथ मुजरिम ने तस्लीम भी किया ये स्वीकार किया कि हाँ उसने ये अपराध किए हैं देखिए पहले तो इन्वेस्टिगेशन बढ़िया हुई है केस में तभी अक्यूज को पता था कि कॉन्टेस्ट करके भी कोई फ़ायदा नहीं है तो उसने ऐसे बिना सोचे समझे तो किया नहीं तो ग्रेवर ऑफेंस था बड़े लेवल पे कॉन्स्पिरेसी थी इंडिया से थी फॉरेन कंट्री से थी तो बड़े लेवल का हाई प्रोफाइल वो था जो लोग इस मामले में पीड़ित रहे हैं जिन वायु सैनिकों की हत्या की यासिन मलिक ने अपनी गोली से और निहत्थे लोगों की ऐसे मासूम लोगों की उनके परिवार वालों का कहना है कि बाकी तो अदालत जो भी सजा दे लेकिन हम चाहते हैं खून का बदला देखिए मेरा ये आर्गूमेंट आज ये रहा है कि देखिए रेट्रीब्यूटिव जो थ्योरी है ना पुनिशमेंट इट टॉक्स अबाउट आई फॉर आई एंड टूथ फॉर टूथ एंड आई हैव मेड सबमिशन टू द कोर्ट दैट इन द केस ऑफ यासिक मलिक ना इवन रिफॉर्मेटरी थ्योरी कार्ड बी थिंक ऑफ बिकॉज ही इज अ हार्ड कोर फंडामेंटलिस्ट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एविडेंस भी मिले बहुत मिला है सब कुछ था व्हाट्सएप चैट्स थी ई मेल्स थी वो सब एविडेंस था एज ही वॉज planning to plead guilty i tried to convince him to contest the trial but he has already made up his mind so in view of that whatever the best legal consequences or what he was told about all the consequences today now the matter has been decided and he is sentenced for 120b he has been punished with 10 years and 10000 fine for 121 ipc He is punished with life imprisonment and 10,000 fine. 121A IPC, 10,000 years with 10,000 fine. 13 UAPA, red with 120B IPC, five year fine, five five year, 5,000 fine. 15 UAPA punishment under 16 UAPA, 10 years, 10,000 fine. जो इन पर और केसेस हैं आते हैं उनके या माहौल वहाँ पर ख़राब करने के पाकिस्तान के इशारों पर काम करने की ये सब चीज़ें पहले से तय हैं और इसको मद्देनज़र रखते हुए उन परिवारों को कम से कम न्याय मिलेगा जिन जिनको कि आज तक तीस सालों में किसी ने पूछा नहीं जी किसी का परिवार का कोई व्यक्ति चला गया किसी का अपहरण किया किसी को मारा गया ये सब ये जो अपराध हैं जब साबित होंगे तो निश्चय ही इससे भी सख्त सजा होनी ही चाहिए जो तो टेरर अभी टेरर फंडिंग का और हवाले का मामला है All right, we are. So what we are going to do is we are going to cut across uh, to the court uh, where this order was announced. We are going to cut across to the valley because earlier on tear gas shelling had to take place to disperse the supporters of Yasin Malik. In the studio with me right now in the newsroom is uh, our senior executive editor Gaurav Savan. Gaurav, will you take us through the trajectory of terror uh, which this man reigned in the country? So uh, you know, Preeti, Yasin Malik is amongst the first batch of terrorists in 1988-89. Uh, these were the people who were radical. by pakistani operatives in 1989 he went across the border trained in pakistan occupied kashmir was uh, stands accused of playing a critical role in the abduction of rubaiya said mm -hmm. the daughter of then home minister of india mufti mohammad said and the sister of uh, former chief minister of jammu and kashmir mm -hmm. mehbooba mufti so he was involved in that abduction he and five hardcore terrorists were released now it is said that armed terror in kashmir got a big flip at that point of time right. then he was involved in the murder of four indian air force personnel he was alleged to have been involved in the murder of lassa call uh, director uh, uh, all india radio doordarshan in shrinagar he was involved in the plotting and uh, murder of kashmiri pandits in the valley and then in 1996 he said he'd given up the gun and he'd become a gandhian so an armed terrorist a terror motivator became a gandhian for decades according to the nia he continued to arrange funds for terrorists including in 2016 17 when uh, burhan wan he was killed he arranged funds from pakistan from hafiz said incidentally he was directly in touch with hafiz mohammed said he was in touch with sayed salauddin of hizbul mujahideen he was in touch with other terrorists arranged funds to foment trouble in kashmir and burn down schools so that there would be a new crop of terrorists that are ready finally he has been convicted in some cases all right we're going to you know got to just stay on with me all right let's uh, quickly cut across because we're getting reactions coming in from the court listen in यासीन मलिक को उम्र कैद हुई है आतंकी फंडिंग केस में क्या मानते हैं आप ये सही जजमेंट है 
अगर आप मुझे ये सवाल करें क्या ये सही जजमेंट है इसका मतलब मैं किन के ऊपर डाउट कर रही हूँ नहीं आप चाहती थी कि सजा मौत मिले अभी उनको उम्र कैद की सजा मिली है तो मेरे केस में थोड़ा मिली है मैं तो मेरा केस तो अभी बारह तेरह जुलाई को उसकी हेयरिंग है तो उसके लिए तो मैंने रिक्वेस्ट की हुई है और कहा हुआ है कि एक ही प्रेसिडेंट बनाना चाहिए एक कानून बनाना चाहिए जैसे इतने कानून बने हैं उसमें कानून जो हैं देश विद्रोह में जो कानून हैं उनको थोड़ा सा हट के और कड़े तरीके से तैयार करना चाहिए ताकि आने वाली जनरेशन्स को ये मैसेज जाए कि हमने देश हित में खड़े होना है देश द्रोह के लिए हमें अपने आप को तैयार नहीं करना आपने देखा होगा you see on your television screen we're going to just put out visuals there yasin malik's visuals after the pronouncement of verdict we're going to play those visuals out for our viewers what you see on those visuals as well he's holding a file and gorav i'll pull you in on this what's interesting is he chose not to contest uh, this particular trial he chose to fight it out on his own uh, you know not only did he do that he actually confessed to all the charges and he said uh, you know uh, i'm okay with whatever you may want to do so the court appointed an amicus right. curiae all right so we we are getting gorav right on our television screen yasin malik being taken right now being escorted which jail will he be taken to immediately take us through what's going to be the next uh, so uh, now there is a action. convict yeah. so far he was an under trial now there is a convict yasin malik uh, there will be a medical that will be carried out and he'll be taken to tehar central prison uh, convicted terrorists are taken to tehar he is kept in the in a high security uh, uh, section of the tehar central jail uh, that is where he is likely to be right. um, and uh, because he remains an under trial in other cases including right. uh, the abduction of rubaiya saeed and the cases that are on against him uh, in terms of the murder of indian air force personnel where charges have been framed against him the trial right. is to continue but this is extremely significant right now you know uh, also what one would need to note right now gorav when we are going to cut across to ashraf bani who's joining us uh, right not very far off from where yasin malik's residence is in uh, shrinagar ashraf stay with me for 10 seconds i want to bring in gorav again because gorav this particular case this particular judgment will not now be contested because he's not contesting it so he, there is no higher court that's a very serve. significant point he will serve this life term there is no higher court right now that's a very important point that you make since he confessed to all charges yes. he cannot go and appeal to a superior Supre court and he's fighting his own case and so he's, he's fighting his own it. case uh, but the nia may go seeking death penalty because in both yes. cases nia sought death penalty or they may uh, prosecute him in other cases right. uh, where uh, you know since it's murder uh, in in both cases or, or abduction he could then face either death penalty or more right. life in prison so that's uh, an interesting point to note viewers as he goes to tehar jail this court if it is left to yasin malik is not going to a higher court there is no higher court there is no apex supreme court here uh, there is no review petition here at all in any of the courts because he is not going to contest it he has accepted the verdict but there are other cases and what god have pointed out here that the nia could very well approach a higher court saying no not death penalty this man deserves uh, not uh, life imprisonment this man deserves the death penalty i want to cut across right now and bring in ashraf wani uh, who's been getting us the latest uh, from shrinagar not very far from where yasin malik lives uh, ashraf a short while ago uh, there was uh, tear gas uh, which was used because there were a lot of supporters and it would have gotten out of hand what's the latest uh, pakistan's prime minister shahbaz sharif has just reacted Absolutely, pakistan's yeah. prime minister shahbaz sharif claims it's a black day for indian democracy and its justice right. system india can imprison yasin malik physically but it can never imprison ideas of freedom he symbolizes so basically uh, shahbaz sharif is only right. parroting pakistan isi's lines here all right so pakistan supporting yasin malik lamenting the life imprisonment for yasin malik that was announced exactly 25 minutes ago we were cutting across back to ashraf wani uh, ashraf thank you for uh, you know holding on take us through what's the situation right now things got to a uh, boil a little while earlier so tear gas was used what's the latest pretty absolutely the security has been put on high alert all across the kashmir valley after this verdict in fact we have seen today after a long time the situn parting in the maisuma area of shrinagar which was known once the hot pot for the 
uh, clashes for the uh, for the protesters and in fact today uh, uh, the supporters of Yasin Malik early in the morning first protested then there was clash between the police and the uh, Yasin Malik supporters in the Mysuma area of Shirinagar. Mysuma area of Shirinagar is the locality where not only the Yasin Malik lives but in fact his office Jomain Kashmir Liberation Front office is situated in the same uh, area and that is why there was some kind of tension day long but now after the verdict the uh, uh, deployment of the security forces particularly police and the paramilitary forces has been increased uh, not only particularly in that area but in fact in other areas of the Srinagar city so that any kind of law and order situation could be curbed not only in the Srinagar but in fact in different parts of the Kashmir Valley. There are supporters of Yasin Malik as well as the Jomain Kashmir Liberation Front in the Kashmir Valley taking that into the consideration. These kind of security measures had been uh, taken into consideration all across the Kashmir Valley. But so far the situation is under control uh, uh, particularly after the verdict, uh, the uh, deployment of security forces all across the Srinagar city particularly in the Mysuma area where the Yasin Malik uh, uh, resides uh, and now uh, the control the whole situation will be to keep the eye on the developments and particularly the main focus will be to avoid any kind of law and order situation or protesters in the Kashmir Valley, particularly in the Srinagar city for the security forces. And Gus, we're going to come back to you for more updates on that story. I want to bring in Gaurav very quickly for two more minutes before uh, uh, we let him go. He's got another bulletin to go to. But Gaurav, uh, take us through right now. What are the other cases on Yasin Malik? Because this is just one of the many, many, many cases that he is accused under. So, and, and this is a terror financing case where the main accused remains Hafiz Mohammed right. Said uh, in Pakistan. And he's accused, uh, uh, he was accused now convicted of arranging funds for fomenting trouble in Jammu and Kashmir. There is a very significant case, uh, which is the abduction of uh, Rubaya Saeed, uh, sister of uh, Mehbooba Mufti, daughter of then Home Minister Mufti Mohammad Saeed. And there is the case uh, where uh, four Indian Air Force personnel were gunned down right. Preeti um, in Srinagar. They were unarmed. They were on their way to office. And right. that was actually the beginning of terror. May I just come in? May yes. I just come in? And the reason why I'm doing so is we're going to cut across to Kamaljit Sandhu right now. Yasin Malik been taken away. Listen it. Tense, but we're given life imprisonment in this case. With camera person Ashok Banot. And with Shreya, this is Kamaljeet Sandhu in Delhi for India Today. All right, viewers, so what you see right there, Kamaljeet Sandhu filing that report. Yasin Malik has been taken in that bus. Uh, he's going to be taken to Tehar Jail. Till now, Gaurav, how much time has Yasin Malik already spent behind bars? So, uh, he's been in jail uh, for, a, for a number of cases uh, for different points of time. Uh, but right now, what becomes extremely crucial is two concurrent sen life uh, imprisonment sentences that he uh, that he will undergo in jail uh, which means as long as he lives he will now remain uh, in jail at least in these cases it depends on what's the uh, conviction in the other cases where he's an under trial you know we were speaking to the widow of uh, uh, squad leader uh, Khanna she said and she's an eyewitness in one of those cases that these terrorists were actually dancing on the dead bodies of four Indian Air Force personnel and she saw it so that is the level uh, of, of, of the terror that these people were starting, the radical Islamic Jihad that these people were waging in Jammu and Kashmir. And then they claim to be Gandhians in some cases with or without guns. All right, Gaurav, appreciate you joining us. Thank you there. Uh, we are, so that's the latest that we're getting. And once again, we're going to cut across to the visuals of Yasin Malik being taken, escorted now to Tihar Jail. In this particular, viewers, in this particular case, it seems until and unless the NIA approaches a higher court and seeks the death penalty because the NIA had sought the death penalty for Yasin Malik uh, in this case. Of course, it wasn't the death penalty but a life sentence that was awarded to Yasin Malik. Yasin Malik is not going to contest that sentence. He's accepted it. Uh, in all likelihood, Yasin Malik will spend the rest of his days uh, behind bars. But what can completely turn the events is if the NIA in this case approaches a higher court or if the other cases against Yasin Malik and in which uh, in all possibility the NIA will once again seek the death penalty. What if that is accorded? One thing that we can say for sure is that Yasin Malik will spend the rest of his days behind bars. All right, so 
We are going to once again encapsulate on what's gone down in the last uh, couple of hours. High drama at the Patiala House Court today. Yasin Malik's case came up. He was already convicted. The quantum of sentence had to be announced and the quantum of sentence the judge in this case deemed fit to be a life penalty, life imprisonment. The NI had sought for the death penalty that wasn't awarded. Yasin Malik chose not to contest the case through a lawyer. He presented uh, his own case where he said he accepted all the charges and he said he's turned into a Gandhian. He wants to now live by Gandhian principles and said he will abide and he will accept uh, any quantum of sentence that he has been given by the courts. Well, he's been awarded the life behind bars penalty, at least in this case. With these visuals, viewers, uh, the final visuals of Yasin Malik there being taken now to the Tihar jail. I'm going to cut into a quick break. You do stay with me. On the other side is our fact check segment. You are watching India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com or call 9999892171. हिंद के पहले भी है हिंदुस्तानी के पहले भी है ये हम हिंदुस्तानी है और हमको हिंदुस्तानी भाषा बोलनी चाहिए और मैं हिंदुस्तानी भाषा बोलता हूँ कई सालों से और मेरे हर गानों में हिंदुस्तानी कल्चर निकलता है तो इसमें डेबिट की तो बातें हैं ही नहीं कुछ मतलब मैं हूँ इंडियन पहली बात तो इस चीज से मैं � क्यों क्यों इस चीज पे आप लोग या कोई भी इंसान फोकस करता है कि ये बॉलीवुड ये कॉलीवुड या टेलीवुड ये है ही नहीं हम हिंदुस्तान के एक अंग हैं हिंदुस्तान में रहते हैं अगर आज साउथ की फिल्में चल रही हैं तो कल बॉलीवुड की चलेगी कल भोजपुरी की चलेगी मराठी चलेगी गुजरात चलेगी वक्त चलता है इसमें मुझे लगता है कोई भी इंसान को है ना ये इस चीज पे जाना ही नहीं चाहिए कि आज देखो साउथ की फिल्म में कितना ये किया है कि बॉलीवुड की फिल्में ही चलने लगी Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com or call 9999892171. You are watching India. You are watching India today. Welcome back viewers, you're watching our fact check segment where we bust certain claims masquerading to be facts on social media platforms and WhatsApp group. There's a claim suggesting that uh, Congress uh, leader and Congress MP Shashi Tharoor danced with party workers during the Chintan Shiver in Rajasthan, Udaipur. Incorrect. The fact check on that. These visuals are of May 18th and they are of Shashi Tharoor 
participating in a party event on by-elections. With that quick fact check, time for us to go into a quick break. You do stay with us. On the other side is to the point. You are watching India Today. Wearing a blue and grey hooded sweatshirt, silently watching the court proceedings from behind a reinforced glass box. This 21-year-old Russian soldier has been sentenced to life imprisonment for killing a Ukrainian civilian. The man he killed was 62 years old and unarmed. In the first war crimes trial being held in Ukraine since Russia's invasion, a young tank commander, Vadim Shishimarin, pleaded guilty to killing Alexander Shalipov. He was killed by the young commander on Feb 28th, four days after Russia's invasion. The Russian saw the elderly man riding a bicycle and talking on his phone. He killed the man to prevent him from reporting on their location. As per the judge, Shishimarin had fired several shots at the victim's head from an automatic weapon on the orders of a higher-ranked soldier. The judge stated, given that the crime committed is a crime against peace, security, humanity and the international legal order, the court does not see the possibility of imposing a shorter sentence. Шишимарина Вадима Євгеньовича, 17.10.2000 -го року народження, визнати винуватим у вчинні кримінального правопорушення, передбаченого частиною 2 статті 438 Кримінального кодексу України та призначеному покаранню у виді довічного позбавлення волі. While the baby-faced soldier showed no emotion upon hearing the court's verdict, his bowed head and shaky hands told a different story. The trial is of huge symbolic importance for Ukraine as it has accused Russia of atrocities and brutality against civilians during the invasion, claiming that there are more than 10,000 possible war crimes. The court reached its verdict five days after holding its first full hearing. There has been no response from Russia to the trial yet, previously stating that it has no information about the trial either. Pollution has killed over 2.3 million Indians in 2019, nearly 1.6 million deaths were just due to air pollution. This is the latest Lancet report on pollution and health that's unveiled such data. The report also blamed pollution for 9 million premature deaths globally. According to that report, modern forms of pollution were particularly evident in South Asia, East Asia and Southeast Asia. And India is one of the worst affected countries due to air pollution. 90% of pollution-related deaths happened in low-income and middle-income households. Furthermore, pollution has a profound economic impact on the whole GDP of a country. Not just human lives, it also affects people's livelihoods, damages food, destroys historical monuments and also affects culture. In essence, pollution stops ecosystems from functioning normally. And when ecosystems are affected, it costs a lot more money. In fact, the study said that between 2000 and 2019, the economic losses caused by population in India amounts to approximately 1% of its GDP. The global cost of fossil fuel air pollution costs about 8 billion US dollars per day. And New Delhi, being the most polluted in the world, according to the World Air Quality Report 2021, should give you an idea here of the rate at which India bleeds money due to pollution alone. Indian cities are routinely ranked on the global pollution leaderboard. More than 480 million people in northern India face the most extreme cases of air pollution in the world. Research has shown that Delhi residents could add 10 years to their lives if air pollution was indeed curbed. The guideline by WHO stipulates that the average particulate matter 10 should not go beyond 50 micrograms per cubic meter of air. Particulate matters are a mixture of pollutants. Burning of solid fuels in households is the single most significant contributor to air pollution in India. 
In 2016, the Pradhan Mantri Yojwala Yojana program was launched to make LPG connections a lot more accessible. And according to an independent assessment of this program, the scheme prevented at least 1.5 lakh pollution-related deaths in 2019. However, in 2019, India's average particulate matter concentration was 70.3 microgram per cubic meter of air, which is the highest globally. You are watching Association with Philips Beer Trimmer. Adapts to you. As you're watching to the point, I'm Preeti Chaudhary. Well, another one has bitten the dust. If you talk about what, it's Kapil Sibyl. He has quit the Congress viewers. He was one of the key members of G23, very vocal, where it came down to criticism of the Gandhis. And he has now left the Congress, quit the Congress, and with the support of Akhilesh Yadav, filed his Rajya Sabha nomination. In midst of this, once again, there is an age-old question which will now be raised again with more fervor. Is the Congress bleeding out? And is it impossible now to stop the exodus from the party? Another massive blow to Congress. Veteran leader and one of Congress's biggest legal voices, Kapil Sibyl, has dumped the Gandhi family. Sibyl, who till recently fronted the G23 rebel group calling for Congress reforms repeatedly, said he quit the party on May 16th. On Wednesday, he was accompanied by SP Chief Akhilesh Yadav while filing nomination for Rajya Sabha from UP, backed by SP. After filing nomination, he said that he wants to be an independent voice in Rajya Sabha to take on the Modi government's shortcomings. 2024 में एक ऐसा माहौल बने हिंदुस्तान में कि मोदी सरकार की जो खामियां हैं वो जनता तक पहुंचाई जाएं और हम इसका प्रयास करेंगे मैं खुद इसमें अपना इसका प्रयास मैंने दे दिया है 16 मई को 16 मई को मैंने कांग्रेस पार्टी से त्याग पत्र दे दिया है नहीं नहीं कोई वजह नहीं है एक परिवार से हम जुड़े हुए थे 30 31 साल के बाद लगा मुझे कि अब वक्त आ गया है कि मुझे एक निर्दलीय के रूप में अगर मुझे सदन में जगह मिलती है तो मैं एक निर्दलीय के रूप में आवाज उठाऊं यही एक वजह है मुझे कांग्रेस से कोई खटाव नहीं है कोई ऐसे कंप्लेंट नहीं है मेरे संबंध आज भी बड़े अच्छे हैं लेकिन इस्तीफा देने का वक्त आ गया था मैं यहां जो नॉमिनेशन फॉर्म जो मैंने भरा है वो निर्दलीय क्या भरा है निर्दलीय का भरा है इंडिपेंडेंट का भरा है और मैं आभारी हूं अखिलेश जी का कि उन्होंने मेरा समर्थन दिया है एज एन इंडिपेंडेंट आई विल बी गोइंग टू द राज्यसभा आफ्टर स्क्रूटनी एंड एवरीथिंग इज इन ऑर्डर आई हैव ऑलवेज वांटेड टू बी एन इंडिपेंडेंट वॉइस इन दिस कंट्री एंड आई एम ग्लैड दैट अखिलेश जी अंडरस्टैंड्स व्हाई दैट इज सो सिबिल इज बिलीव्ड to share a warm relationship with many SP leaders, including Akhilesh Yadav and Azam Khan. He recently represented Azam Khan in Supreme Court and helped him secure interim bail. I hope that the big questions in the country are today. What kind of country is the country? Today, the most important thing is the most important thing. The most important thing is the most important thing. The most important thing is the most important thing. The most important thing is the most important thing. चीन लगातार हमारी सीमाओं के अंदर आ रहा है तो इन तमाम बड़े बड़े सवालों पर मुझे लगता है कपिल सिब्बल जी समाजवादी पार्टी और अपने विचारों को रख पाएंगे द कांग्रेस सीम टू रिजाइंड बाय सिब्बल्स आउस्टर आफ्टर हिज बैनर ऑफ रिवॉल्ट टारगेटिंग द गांधी फैमिली डायरेक्टली ऑन पास्ट ओकेजन्स कांग्रेस पार्टी को लीडर क्यों छोड़ रहे हैं इसका निरीक्षण तो कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व को करना होगा चिंतन शिविर के बाद ऐसे कई लोग हैं जिन्होंने पार्टी को अलविदा कहा है मैं समझता हूं कांग्रेस पार्टी इस पर कहीं ना कहीं विचार कर रही होगी इस पर मैं टिप्पणी नहीं करना चाहता कपिल सिब्बल जी से ये उम्मीद या आशा नहीं थी क्योंकि एक लंबे समय से वो कांग्रेस में रहे और विभिन्न पदों पर रहे और कांग्रेस से 
उन्हें भी उनको पूरी तरह से सम्मान और प्रतिष्ठा दी थी लेकिन इस तरह से वो पार्टी छोड़कर चले जाएंगे और सिर्फ है एक राज्यसभा की सीट के लिए ये ऐसी उम्मीद हम लोग उनसे नहीं थी बीजेपी रब्ड इट इन मॉकिंग राहुल गांधी लीडरशिप सेइंग ही शुड लॉन्च और कांग्रेस मत छोड़ो ड्राइव नाउ मुझे लगता है कि अखिलेश यादव जी की वो जरूरत हो सकते हैं लेकिन जिस तरह का उनका बयान आया जिस तरह से उन्होंने बात कही तो जब वो देश के इतने बड़े मंत्रालयों में रहे तब उन्होंने देश हित में क्या कर दिया इसका जवाब उन्हें देना होगा सिबल स्मार्च फ्रॉम कांग्रेस कम्स डेज आफ्टर टू वेल नोन फेसेस डम्प्ड द गांधी इन रन अप टू क्रूशल पोल्स वाइल गुजरात पार्टीदार लीडर हार्दिक पटेल इज हेडिंग टू द बीजेपी कांग्रेस पंजाब फेस सुनील झाखड़ हैज ऑलरेडी ज्वाइन द सैफ्रन कैंप to join swords with the gandhi family and giving the chintan shivir a miss when veteran lawyer kapil sibal filed his nominations from lucknow it didn't come as a surprise for the party high command perhaps the gandhi family loyalist heaved a sigh of relief because amidst all the other exits this exit was much awaited for this is most me saying in delhi for india today you know once again uh, one can't really help but uh, talk about all those various committees that were formed after the chintan shiver because this is a cute chinta one after the other sunil jakhar hardik patel and now you have kapil sibal who all quit the party all post shiver of the congress i want to quickly cut across to our panelists this evening to actually break down is the congress now bleeding out uh, and is the exodus from the congress unstoppable is there anything that the congress can do now uh, swati chaturvedi senior journalist rashid kidwai senior journalist on wadakan spokesperson bjp but today uh, mr wadakan we hope that you will join us in the capacity of someone who was disillusioned with the congress and decided to quit the party and i'll begin with you on that note mr wadakan you know kapil sibal is not a you know a, a young new leader who is getting restless he's been in the works for a very very long time he understands how the party works what makes somebody like him walk out of the congress prithi have uh, seen and worked with mr kapil sibal for quite some time when he was the spokesman of the congress and i think uh, there was that commitment in him that fire and uh, the fire in the belly in fact in which he spoke as a as a briefing hall i think rashid was there at that point of time and there was a commitment to the party and i think it is a huge loss for the congress party it is not a question of rajya sabha as people are trying to make it it's not a question of rajya sabha it's much more than that he has made a statement it's a very peaceful non violent kind of a statement i would say in which he says well i'm i'm saying goodbye to a party where i've served for so long and uh, my utility there uh, he didn't say that but as as has reached a zero level so i think this was waiting to happen and uh, i think he's a one man who calls a spade a spade he does not uh, mince words and uh, yes this kind of people are rare to find in any political party as a lawyer he was extraordinary and uh, the national herald cases were uh, you know the bail was uh, granted to the family because of him and i think it's very ungrateful of them if they haven't treated him properly because i don't think he was asking for more he wasn't asking for a ticket or something okay. he was there he was there as a person trying to bring about uh, bring the party back to power i'm not speaking as a spokesman of the bjp but i'm telling yes. you the personality of the man But, but you know that's why and and we're going to we're going to super you correctly as well uh, you know in this bulletin you are not the spokesperson for the bjp which you are but on the show tonight uh, we'd we'd hope you'd be just joining us as former congress uh, swati chaturvedi i'll bring you in there are two points of views that are uh, being debated about uh, especially on social media and offline which is number one is this someone who's paid the price because of the g23 kapil sibal was the most vocal critic when it came down of the gandhis of rahul gandhi in particular or is it what was made out and said at the chintan shiver that it's now not what the party's done for you or what you have to do for the party it's an opportunist who has now been shed which which way do you see it 
Well, I will see it another way entirely, Preeti. The Congress party is facing a death by a thousand cuts. You've got Hardik Patel, who's in his 40s, leaving, and now Mr. Sibal, who's in his early 80s. There is clearly a problem. And the Gandhi family, which keeps saying that, you know, people should be grateful to the party and look what they can do for the party, they should actually look at what they have done to the party. You know, Kapil Sibal is an exceptional lawyer. I know for a fact that he, he, he was the convener, so, so to speak, of the G23. And, you know, he has gone public many times with this utter and absolute crisis of leadership. Now, the problem is that, you know, if you do things like death by committee, that doesn't solve a problem. The essential problem the Congress party currently faces is that all its leaders, it doesn't seem to have any workers at all, but all its leaders have zero faith in the leadership of Rahul Gandhi, which is sort of hanging over the party like a sword because Mrs. Sonia Gandhi is doing like a holding operation. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's a matter of Rajya Sabha. You know, they will give another Rajya Sabha to somebody else on the G20 today, uh, Mr. Azad probably. But it's also the fact that there is no hope left. You know, these leaders are telling us by their exits, you know, leaders like Yodhra Dutta Sindhya, leaders like Kapil Sibbal, leaders like Hardik Patel, across the board, that the Congress party's own leaders have no faith, have absolutely a zero vote of they're voting with their feet when they leave the Congress in the leadership of Rahul Gandhi. You know, um, a, a plausible point, and I'd bring in uh, Rashid Kidwai into this conversation. You know, Swati has raised a very prominent point, Mr. Kidwai. The fact is, it's not, it's not the old guard, it's not the G23 in particular. The old, the new. Nobody really trusts the party anymore. So I think, uh, Priti, if is, uh, Mr. Sibbal is more, more disillusioned with G23 or their failure to raise some of the issues at uh, Udaipur than the Gandhis. See, you must remember Mr. Kapil Sibbal is a professional. He's always been, I mean, I saw him first time in parliament when he was uh, in that impeachment motion against a Supreme Court judge. So he always wants to be in thick of things. And he, he, he at, in the present day Congress, he didn't have any role. So therefore, I think he had reasons to feel disillusioned, and uh, it looks like a you know long shot being an independent MP from Samajwadi Party and bring this uh, kind of umbrella of uh, you know non NDA parties together, etc. But Mr. Simpal is taking his chance, and he was always a kind of dissenter. Uh, I remember in 1999 when Sonia Gandhi was contesting as Congress president, and uh, there was. A lot of people were unhappy and in one of the meetings and my dear Mr. Sipan formally joined the Congress, I think in 96 or so. And he said, if nobody contests, I will contest against Sonia Gandhi. And finally, of course, Mr. Jitendra Prasad had contested. So I'm saying this streak of independence, this is actually a problem. You, If you leave aside uh, Dr. Manmohan saying, see, most professionals in the Congress, they always have a, this thing about their uh, the professional integrity, self-esteem and this sense of loyalty. So, Mr. Sibbal was carrying that baggage, but finally he's out of it today. Also, the fact that out of the entire G23 lot, over time, he's been the most vocal critic where the Gandhis are concerned. Has he somewhere down the line paid the price of that and completely sidelined? Uh, we're going to take that question next. Swati, you were shaking your head. You want to come and give me two minutes. I want to quickly dip in uh, to uh, this exclusive interview. Rajdeep Sardesai, our consulting editor, spoke to Kapil Sibyl just a short while ago. Listen in. And joining us now is today's newsmaker of the day, uh, the former Congress leader and union minister, Kapil Sibal, who's just uh, filed his nomination for the Rajya Sabha, supported by the Samajwadi Party. Mr. Sibal, is this the end of the chapter? I use the word ex-Congress leader. Is it all over for you with the Congress Party with which you were for more than two decades? I, you cannot say anything about the future. Right? At the moment, I want to be an independent voice in this country. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there are hardly any independent voices in parliament. Everybody is tied to the coattails of a political party. So members of parliament cannot speak their mind. It is time that in a democracy as large as India, as, 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 as significant as the largest democracy in the world. There are no independent voices in parliament. But are you truly independent because you're taking the support of the Samajwadi party? You haven't joined them, but you've taken their support. So effectively, you will be batting for the Samajwadi party in parliament you're, 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 or for the opposition. What is your role? What is the role you see for yourself? And you've left the Congress. What does an independent member mean? He's independent of political parties. They may have supported me, but they are, it is their graciousness. 
It is their generosity that they accepted this. Which political party accepts, mm -hmm. you know, one, one, one seat being lost by them and given it to a person who stands as an independent? No political party does it. I think that's because you've appeared in several cases for them. I have appeared in several cases for several other parties also. You tell me which party I've not appeared for. I've appeared for 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 um, DMK. I've appeared for Anna DMK. I have appeared for uh, you know uh, Samajwadi. I got them the symbol of the cycle. I have appeared for Mayawati. I have appeared for uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, so you. Nine o'clock viewers, we're going to pull out, uh, put out the entire interview with Kapil Sibyl on the reason why he quit the Congress. He did say, though, uh, for now, he doesn't want anything to do the party. For now, the operative word. But uh, I want to cut across back to our panel. Uh, panel, uh, Tom Vadakan, the fact is what we were talking about earlier, which uh, was raised uh, with Mr. Kidwai as well. Did Kapil Sibyl somewhere down the line pay a price of being completely sidelined because he chose to be openly vocal against the Gandhis, the proverbial high command? Well, that is obvious enough, because anybody who speaks against the high command has shown the exit route or sidelined. It happened many a times, when especially not only with the Gandhis, but there were second level leaders. If you uh, refuse to fall in line with their thought, they would say, they would say it openly, we'll sideline you. I mean, I've heard that many times. So it doesn't come as a surprise, because these are people who said it on, the, on your face. But uh, here it is done very silently. They, they put you in the back of the, some particular bench and uh, they form a committee which never meets and all that. I'm not into that. But I think there's much more significant thing that is happening. Congress's uh, next uh, exposure is going to be in the next general election. And if Kapil Sibalji is supported by SP, this is my assessment. It's supported by uh, SP and the team that will follow, the alignments that will follow. I don't see Congress being part of it. I think that is a message that has gone very clearly. Under no circumstances are the Gandhis going to be led. Uh, well, I know it was very kind of Mr. Simple to say, I don't know the future. Well, everybody, nobody knows the future. But if facts are to be followed, I think in future, the alignment of the SP with the Congress party is over and out. Uh, that is my assessment. But I wish him best of luck for what he has done because he stood by what he believed. And this is not something he would hide. During a private conversation, he would mention a lot of things which I don't want to go to in public at this juncture. Because there are many things he told me and many things I will carry till my death what I heard. Because that's the confidentiality that we maintain. He's a good friend. He's mm -hmm. a good mentor. He has been the spokesman of the party. Uh, and he would be very frank, you know, if you hurt him or said something against him. He would come back to you and say, well, did you say such, such a thing? Uh, but then if you say that... Uh, you didn't say that, and he believed you. I mean, that's the kind of a man he is. But I wish him, he's an asset for any party, but now that he's uh, standing up as an independent, and right. his views as an independent member in Rajya Sabha will be heard. But yes, I think in the national interest, he would speak for the nation, for the country, and the country first. I think right. that is one thing which okay. I think he would move one step well, forward. Independent in. with the support of the Samajwadi Party. Swati Chaturvedi, you wanted to make a point there. As a political analyst, if you see the road ahead with these multiple committees, we've lost count on the ones that were set up at the Chintan Shivar, uh, where the Congress is concerned, especially for the Gandhis. How ominous is the script? Well, Preeti, if you remember the last time you and I chatted on television was when Prashant Kishore refused to join the Congress. I don't think we've, in the last past eight years, ever discussed anything or any kind of good news for the Congress. You know, you, they have the Gujarat and the Himachal Pradesh elections coming up. And as uh, a lot of people are saying, and I'm adding my voice to that, they just have no hope there. Because, you know, the fundament, it's not, a, it's not about Kapil Sibbal. Kapil Sibbal still represents, by the way, the Gandhi family in, the, uh, in a huge amount of cases which the government has filed against them. So I think he's going to continue being their lawyer. He is raising a different point. His point is, and the point of other leaders who I speak to all the time, is that there is no leadership. The, or the Rahul Gandhi and the Gandhi family currently do not inspire either the voters or the Congress leaders. The problem is that they are not being heard. Like Kapil Sibbal was snuffed, snuffed by not being called to their court, not being included in all these myriad committees which don't meet. But that's the Congress party for you. 
you know today we are saying they're not surprised i mean why are they not surprised they should feel shock and horror that you know senior leaders are leaving across the board the party is bleeding you know it's bleeding out and they keep saying we are not surprised why they, what are they waiting for you know are they the three gandhi is going to be the only people left in the congress finally as leaders Rashid Kidwai, you know, the fact is, post the Chintan Shiver, the internal exuberance of how the Congress is going to be rejuvenated, all those multiple reactions and sound bites that we played ad nauseum as well. You know, it just it shows the mirror to the Congress. Since then, you've had three big uh, people who've quit your party. Well, uh, uh, actually, I'm surprised that only three people have quit because the kind of outcome of Chitan Shivar, all the G23, 23, uh, G23 people who were talking about internal democracy and range of issues, they should have resigned. But here are the people who are bargaining, bargaining for Rajya Sabha birds. So, and you see, the Congress has set up a task force for 2024. They have not set up any task force for Gujarat election or for Himachal elections because everyone in the Congress knows that you know the outcome is not going to be great. The problem is no matter what all we keep saying in the television studio, it is for the stakeholders. When Indira Gandhi started performing badly, uh, people revolted against her. 1977, everyone left her. So, and that, that's what happened with LK Advani after 2009 defeat of the BJP. So what I'm saying is here, the Congress, the Congress leadership, I mean, Gandhis are very are sitting pretty. They are very comfortable. They have the mantle of leadership, whether Rahul Gandhi formally takes over or not. But the stakeholders, that is the leaders of the Congress party, Congress workers, they are not doing anything. All so right, what you know, will happen? Right. Swati Chaturvedi, I'll bring you all in for 30, 30 seconds. There. And the question is, uh, Yogendra Yadav, uh, you know, had said very famously and got slammed for it about six months ago, which is that the Congress needs to die for the Congress to rise again. Do you see it happening sooner than later, possibly, possibly post Himachal Gujarat? No, pretty. I don't. I see the Gandhis virtually holding the Congress party as a hostage. You know, they are holding a, a, the 20% of the opposition vote as a hostage. The opposition leaders don't trust them. The voters don't trust them. But currently, the Congress party is a hostage to the Gandhi family who are inspiring no confidence and nothing. Nothing seems to face them. Nothing seems to shock them. And finally, you know, eventually it's just going to be the three of them left because everybody else is voting with their feet. Tom Vadakan, do you see the Gandhis ever stepping down or is it something which is completely unimaginable that it's not going to happen? An alternate Congress needs to be created for that. Preeti, at the pr present moment, I see uh, the Congress party as a private limited company with the board of directors, uh, the, the, uh, the daughter, the son and the mother. And that's all that matters. The rest, uh, they, they, they come and go. They don't matter. If they fall right. in line, fine. But what future holds for them, I'm not an astrologer. But if the way they are going, the signs are not too good. And I think mm -hmm. they're going to face turbulence, not just uh, in midair, but even when they land, if they land. Rashid Kidwai, what do you see happen right now? Do you see till 24, Congress once again teetering at the fringes of every possible elections and then a huge debacle? And then there's practically nothing would be left. See, 2024 is a, it's a, everybody is having a kind of dream. Of course, the BJP NDA has its own dream of very smooth sailing and perhaps that their dream will come true. Now, the opposition is also, Aam Aadmi Party and Trinamool uh, Congress are trying to upstage the Congress. But there cannot be any numbers, Priti. Even if, you know, Congress ends up with 10 MPs, the, uh, the combined non-NDA opposition would need that. So, therefore, that is a problem. And therefore, you right. see, there is a lot of cozy relationship. Nobody is abusing, sizing each other because they know, as Kapil Simpal himself said, that there is future for that. Now, the right. future is, whether you're talking about future is for 50 seats or 100 seats. The combined or 10 seats, Swati. Who would have thought the Congress coming down and said, even if the Congress gets 10 seats? And nobody takes responsibility. They lose the election and the cry goes out, Rahul Gandhi, come back. I mean, why? What is going on with this opposition? You know, this is the country's only right. opposition party and they've forgotten politics. Right. All right. Okay. With that, I'm going to bow out of this debate. Appreciate uh, all three of you for taking the time out and joining us, Mr. Vadakan, Swati Chaturvedi and Rashid Kidwai. Well, unfortunately for the Congress, uh, and I also doubt that one can put uh, their money on it, this is not the last of the debates that we are going to be having on the unending, unstoppable exodus where the Congress is concerned, bleeding out right now. How much life does it still have? Well, we don't quite know. A quick break to stay with us. Up next is Rahul Kaval, and he's joining us from Davos.
history is at a turning point from the war in Ukraine to the climate and food crisis. From the much wanted metaverse to unstable cryptocurrencies, get a ringside view to the ideas and challenges that are shaping the post pandemic world. Catch me all through this week on India Today and Business Today as I bring you all the latest from a World Economic Forum that's being held this time in summer in Davos.就是像你看十年前大家追求的一些美丽是比较标准化的，但最近好像感觉非常标准化的美呢，又被颠覆了，要整成就就就是弄成比自己原本更好的样子，而不是说就就自己本来就很美啦，就是做优化就好。会在意，我觉得再强大的人都应该会有一些在意吧，只是多多少少的问题。就像我为什么会去做光电，可能我觉得哦，我最近呃皮肤可能不像之前一样了，可能不像几年前一样，所以我会想去做一个改变。对。Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. You are watching. These are visuals from Afghanistan's newsrooms where women were forced to cover their faces. The Information and Culture Ministry previously announced that the policy was final and non-negotiable. Back at home in Karnataka, some Muslim students wanted to wear the hijab in the classroom and were banned. This made hijab a topic of a fierce debate. But the practice of parda is not just an issue restricted to the Muslim community. It's widely prevalent among other religions as well. The practice of parda among women in India exists in different forms of the gungat, the pallu, the patta, burka, hijab and so on. Hijab is a traditional scarf worn by Muslim women to cover the hair and neck and sometimes the face. Burka is a tip-to-toe gown covering the entire body. 
A study in 2019 by Lokniti was conducted among 6,348 women of 18 years and above in 11 Indian states. Respondents were asked if they practiced any kind of parda. The results showed that about two in every five Indian women wore a parda under three situations. One-third in front of male members of their family, two-fifths in front of their relatives, and nearly the same proportion in public places. And if we look at the data across religions, then it shows two-fifths of both Hindu women and Muslim women observe parda even in their personal spaces, that is from the men of their family. That's 42% and 45% respectively. Muslim women appear more likely to comply with the practice when in public, and the proportion of Hindu women remains high, with over two-fifths wearing a ghungat or a pallu while out in public. A negligible portion of Christian and Sikh women report practicing any form of parda. Over two-fifths of rural women, that's 42 percent, practice... Presented by Aditya Birla Group, Big In Your Life. Powered by Berger Paints, Paint Your Imagination. Co-powered by only OLX Autos gives the best price for your car. Co-powered by NetMeds, India Ki Apni Pharmacy. Hello and welcome. We live in unprecedented times. Very rarely have so many different kinds of crises played themselves out at the same time. Nobody quite knows where this geopolitical uncertainty will lead to next. But what we are doing here at the India Today studio at the World Economic Forum in Damos is setting up a very high quality conversation with some of the world's leading experts. There is no way we could have assembled this kind of a panel at the same place at the same time at any other place. I am privileged to welcome at this time, and I'll start from the far corner uh, by introducing Ian Bremer, one of the world's leading experts on global political risk. He runs the Eurasia Group, so welcome. Thank you. Flanking him is Kishore Mehbubani. He's been former president of the United Nations Security Council, top Singapore diplomat, academic, He's been on several of our shows and we're seeing him in person for the first time. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, we have Ivana Klimpush, Member of Parliament in Ukraine, Chair of the Parliamentary Committee on Integration of Ukraine to the EU. I want to introduce a special guest joining us on India Today Television for the first time, Alexander Stubb, former Prime Minister of Finland, a top expert on the European Union, very respected voice here uh, in Europe. He's the director and professor at the School of Transnational Governance in Florence. He's been finance minister, foreign minister, trade and Europe minister in Finland. Thank you, Mr. Stubb. It's great to have you with us. One of my favorite global commentators, Martin Wolf, chief economics commentator for the Financial Times, widely tracked. Everyone knows him. Everyone wants to know what Martin Wolf is saying. So we're delighted that you could join us. Thank you so much. And our very own Samir Saran. He's been lighting quite a few fires. They're calling him a fire starter here in Davos, president of the Observer Research Foundation. Samir, welcome again. I want to start by asking Ian Bremer because you look at risk very carefully. Everyone watching at this time, and nobody really knows what happens next. But if I were to say, given the fact that we're now months into the Russia-Ukraine conflict, where do you see this war head militarily? And then we'll talk geopolitically. Well, it's obviously too early uh, to say what we think the outcome of the war is going to be. Uh, the Ukrainians have fought incredibly admirably, and NATO has come together to provide support. Will that continue to be the case in three months, in six months, in 12 months? Most people that I know at Davos and on this panel believe that this war is not going to end anytime soon. And so I think a level of humility around how uncertain the outcome is going to be is still a smart thing to do. But a one thing that I think we can be very clear on is that Europe does feel an existential threat on the basis of this invasion. It is a threat to democracy is a threat to their territorial integrity. They, it is the end of the peace dividend. They know they must spend real money on defense and prioritize national security going forward. That we know. The second thing that we know is that the level of decoupling of Russia from the advanced industrial democracies, not from the entire world, not from the democracies in the entire world, Lord knows India, but from the United States and its wealthy allies, that feels to me near, near complete and effectively permanent. I mean, for the long term, as long as Putin is in charge of Russia, as long as Russia looks like it does today, there is some form of Cold War between Russia and the West. 
But I think beyond that, there's still an awful lot to recognize that we don't know today. Martin Wolf, your sense of what could be the next step in this war, where do you think things are heading? Well, I would be uh, an absolute fool, which I try to avoid, to predict the military outcomes. Uh, if Ian isn't prepared to do that, I won't. I think, to me, uh, leaving aside that, this war obviously creates huge economic consequences. Um, it's had big effects on energy prices, uh, on coming on, on top of already important energy price movements. It's creating a real risk and please worry about famine uh, because this is the grain basket or an, a grain basket of the world. That will have profound implications for developing countries. I think serious unrest is very likely in important food importing countries and energy importing countries, oft sometimes the same. Um, and this is in the context of a still very unsettled world economy. The COVID shock is still there. We have exceptional inflation surges. So I think we have to look at this in addition to the tragedy there, the uncertainty about the outcome of the war. And I agree with everything Ian said. It's existential clearly for Europe. This is a very big global moment at a time of substantial economic stress. And we don't know how that will play out either. So let's deal with the economics for a moment, leaving aside the military aspects. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the potential of famine. How real do you see the fear being, especially in places like North Africa? And economically, where do you see this war lead to next? Well, the general rule that all economists have learned, basic, basically from the work of a very famous Indian economist, Amartya Sen, is that famine is a policy choice. That is to say, we basically never had a situation when there was generalized food shortages and where anybody, at least in the modern world, the last hundred years or so, has had to starve to death. It's a policy choice. There's certainly enough food. The question is whether... Uh, given the prices uh, and given where the stocks are, the, the food will be found and moved from the countries that have it to the countries that don't have it. This is a policy choice that has not yet been made. Uh, the IMF's managing director has made that very, very clear. I am optimistic, but it's a very big issue, that the wealthier countries of the world, including some very big food producers like Canada, Australia, the United States, and others will be able to find ways, and Europe is actually very comfortably self-sufficient, um, to, to manage this. But it's a question of management. Like the debt crises, we are certainly going to see, given what's happening to the dollar and what's happening to, going to happen to interest rates, there is going to be a succession of significant crises in the developing and emerging world. And the question is not whether we can deal with them, there's no question we can, but whether the people will deal with them. And there's one important element in some of them, but not all, and that's China. If we're dealing with a debt crisis, China is now one of the biggest creditors of the developing and emerging world, and cooperation between the West and China on debt is essentially non-existent. So there are policy challenges I see rather than fatalities. Very few people outside China understand China quite the way that Ambassador Mehbubani does. Looked at from your perspective, where do you see this crisis head next? Uh, also possibly from a Chinese point of view? Well, there's no doubt that the Ukraine war uh, has hit China very badly. And it's been negative for China on at least four counts. Number one, President Xi Jinping wanted in the year 2022 calm and stability because there's an important political transition coming up. Instead, he's got to deal with the domestic challenge of ending COVID-19, zero policy, and also dealing with Ukraine. Number two, his number one strategic partner, Russia, has been seriously weakened. That's a loss for China. And number three, President Xi wanted to deal with a separate United States and a separate Europe, but Ukraine has completely consolidated Western solidarity, and so that's a setback geopolitically also for Xi Jinping. And fourthly, of course, uh, I think probably the biggest shock for China was the fact that they thought they had $3.2 trillion of assets in their foreign reserves. <laughs> now they realize they can be seized overnight, just like half the central bank reserves of Russia were sealed, seized. So you can see how it's been negative for China on several counts. But having said that, I think it's very important to counterbalance the, the short-term shocks that we are facing with the long-term trends that are happening. 
And if you do a kind of a long-term trend, for the, let's say take this decade of 2020s, I can confidently predict that, and I'm going to say this even though uh, I'm not the expert, I'm, for the 1.3 billion people in India, for the 1.4 billion people in China, and for the 700 million people in Southeast Asia and ASEAN, that this makes it 3.4 billion people, at the end of this decade, they'll be much better off. Because there's profound, deeply instituted policy changes have been put in place to ensure that growth will happen in this region. So let me just conclude with one statistic so you understand what I'm talking about. In the year 2000, the combined economy of ASEAN was one-eighth the size of Japan. Japan's economy was eight times bigger. Now Japan's economy is only 1.5 times bigger. By 2030, ASEAN's economy will be bigger than Japan's. Mr. Stubb, from a European point of view, we're seeing greater European consolidation, EU looking more purposeful than it's uh, seemed forever, at least on the outside. How do you see this war play itself out from here on, uh, from an EU and Europe perspective? Yeah, certainly in the beginning, there was an unprecedented unity between the European states. And in many ways, the exact opposite happened to what Putin had wanted. You know, Ukraine became European, Europe became united, NATO found its new purpose, Transatlantic Partnership 2.0. And the icing on the cake, of course, Finnish and uh, Swedish NATO membership. But I've been speaking with Ukrainian MPs today, and I'm, I'm warning of this sentiment of war fatigue. We're into day 90 of the war now. And the problem here is that our political leaders are not communicating the price of war. And we're pretty much in a situation whereby the focus is soon going to move towards inflation. Uh, it's going to move towards higher energy prices, higher food prices, the asylum crisis, and this is going to cause, I think, a lot of unrest in Europe uh, and a conversation on a political level. I predict that this will start sometime around August, uh, September. So this unity is unfortunately going to be a little bit shorter than expected. You don't think it'll stay this way? You don't think this is a new EU which is seeing the risks posed by uh, Russia, possibly moving away from China, at least the countries which seem to be coming into China's grip, now realizing potentially the challenges posed by China? Sure, to a certain extent. I mean, there's nothing that unites you more than a common enemy. And I guess, you know, Putin has done his best to do that on the European front. And this has revived the transatlantic relationship. And in that sense, taking a little bit away the focus from the U.S. antagonism towards uh, China, but I'm an old enough EU nerd to understand that, you know, the European Union is not a utopia. Uh, it's always more than an international organization, less than a state, and there's always going to be bickering. And the more of us we have in the European Union, the more we're going to bicker. Uh, and in many ways, I say that it always advances in three stages. One is a crisis, two is chaos, and three is suboptimal solution. Uh, so that's, you know, the EU that we live with. <laughs> and that's very interestingly put, and it reflects a bit of what happens back home in India as well. <laughs> most issues but Ivana Mr. Stubb made an important point about fatigue everyone here outside of Ukraine wants the war to get over as do people in Ukraine but there's a certain sense of growing fatigue about where this ends when you hear all of this as a member of parliament and as a representative of the Ukrainian people what's going through your head where do you actually see things go next well, for sure, we Ukrainians do not have the right to be fatigued or tired sure. because it's, um, it's not only existential for Europe uh, or for the free world, as far as I believe. It's totally uh, existential for us because what Russia is trying to do is trying to erase us from the map of the world, so as a nation and as a state. And uh, therefore, for us, it's the only choice to fight till we regain our territories, till, till we um, restore our territorial integrity, so and independence and there we definitely need this um, uh, backing from the free nations uh, which um, you know um I, am, I would be more optimistic in terms of uh, hoping that um, there will be finally an understanding in the EU and transatlantic-wise that values are important specifically when they are defended and they should not be uh, taken for granted as several generations of Europeans and Americans have been already um, thinking of, of One values. One of the themes that we pick up here in Davos is that we're talking so much about war Whereas we should also be talking about peace and what can potentially lead to that peace and that 
there isn't enough of a conversation at this moment about how uh, Putin can possibly get off the ramp and how we can find a way of establishing peace. Well, first and foremost, uh, there is no way for any face-saving um, exercise for Putin because Putin doesn't have a face. That's one thing. Uh, secondly, uh, it's what's important to understand that this war, in order to ensure that there is security after this war is, is finished, needs to be ended, ended in a victory of Ukraine and the free world. And so if that is well understood, that means that we will restore the, territory, the uh, security in the world, the rule-based order, which is uh, definitely um, vanishing at this particular moment because of Russian actions and uh, that we will be able to actually think of the future not only exclusively of Ukrainian peaceful future but actually much wider not only region-wise but also world-wise. Samir, Ukraine isn't losing, Russia isn't winning. Far from what should happen, tell us what do you think is most likely to happen next? I don't know and I think uh, Ian is right, we all need to be a little humble here. Uh, we are in uncharted territory uh, firstly, because uh, in the 21st century, uh, violating someone's territorial integrity is unacceptable, should be unacceptable, was not something that most military planners were, were planning for. So I think this is in some sense a grace one because we knew it was coming and it came. It came faster than we thought it would come. Now, having said that, I think there are three interesting perspectives uh, that uh, have been shared this, uh, in this particular discussion. The first is... Uh, on EU and its role going ahead. Uh, can this be the moment when EU really becomes a political strategic security actor? Or as the conflict lingers on, will we see a reversal? And will we see uh, back to the old ways? Will we see trade and transactionalism uh, trumping um, any other uh, value-based framework that uh, EU today believes is fundamental to defend and fight for? I think that's one thing that we need to watch. The second. Uh, what about the other votes that were garnered in the first big UNGA vote, 140 odd votes that came? How many of them are going to feel the same uh, a few months from now, three months, six months? Are we going to poll similar numbers or are we going to begin to see um, those outside of the proverbial West uh, really begin to get exasperated by a never-ending family feud? Because some are going to see this as a European problem and are going to begin to get on with their lives, as Kishore mentioned, and that's the third point. Uh, uh, most of Asia sees this decade as important for their transformation. Uh, and, and for us, sitting in India as well, I mean, you know, yes, we are, we'll have to steady the boat. We are being buffeted by inflation and, and, and challenges around some commodities and, and energy supplies. But I think there is also an opportunity in this crisis. And I, and I can think of a few. The first, of course, is can we right-size some of our relationships? This is the moment to reflect. Uh, can we write, when I, I, I'm talking about dependencies, all sorts of dependencies on Russia, on the West, on some other uh, uh, important uh, contributors to our, uh, our, our political economy. And I think that right-sizing of relationships is one thing. And, and you mentioned China, but I'm sure most countries are being faced with a few questions that they need to respond to today. And certainly India is going to be uh, engaging with that or should be engaging with that in terms of resetting its relationships. That's first. The second, of course, is the economic question. Uh, and, and here I think uh, 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 there is a, a, a positive side to it. Uh, we are seeing growth and momentum and we are beginning to see many folks uh, unlock their economic potential in the fourth industrial revolution. But we are also seeing that what was uh, the basis, the undergirding of the fourth industrial revolution uh, may actually be a political arena. Uh, you know, for example, technology. Um, the technology is not apolitical. Uh, you know, when, when Uncle Sam decides that we need to cancel Russia, technology companies cancel Russia. Uh, and so how safe is the fundamental assumption that our growth based on international platforms is sanguine? And I think that's, that's the second question. And final, final question that I really want to uh, uh, leave here is uh, what does it do to the world's approach to China going ahead? Now, is this a, is a value-based war only applicable in Europe? Or is that... Uh, 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 global. So uh, let me build on that and ask Ian Bremer whether the war in Ukraine and the impact on Russia increases, in your view, the probability of China going to war on Taiwan, 
or does it decrease the probability and why? Well, uh, I would say that it decreases the possibility, except that I thought the possibility was very, very low before Russia invaded Ukraine. So it's about the same. Why is that? Well, unlike Russia, which is a country that has been in decline, that viewed the Soviet collapse as a humiliation, as a geopolitical debacle, China is not. You've heard this in the panel. China's a country that feels like its future is ahead of it, and it is. Uh, and so as a consequence, they have the ability to be strategically patient. Furthermore, this is a tough year for China, not just because of Xi Jinping's third term that needs to be gone through smoothly, but also because the economy is going very badly now that they have you know, this big challenge with Russia. You've heard all of that before. Taiwan is the absolute critical semiconductor producer in the world for China and for others. They're not going to risk that suddenly. Furthermore, if they've learned any lesson from the course of the last three months, it's that the West is prepared to respond collectively when there is a crisis, when there is a true challenge. Not 2008 in Georgia, which was marginal. Not 2014 in Ukraine, which was at the margins. But you know, the Chinese frequently learn from the mistakes of the Russians. When Gorbachev decided to engage in political and economic reform simultaneously, they said, that was a really bad idea. Let's not do that again. And indeed, they haven't. Full throttle on economic reforms, no political reform whatsoever, no decentralization. I see exactly that going forward right now. Putin thinking that he has an easy way forward to grab Ukraine and no one's going to respond. You think the Chinese are going to say, let's roll the dice a second time on that one? Or are they going to let Putin flail around a bit? I would make a strong bet on the latter. But that is assuming that... There's a rational mind and a rational decision. The reason I say it, for example, if you look at some of the policy choices, just over the past few weeks, the continuing with the zero COVID uh, idea that you can somehow lock the pandemic away, which isn't very clear.